church. Good morning. Right. <coughs> Couldn't be in the house of the Lord, is it not? Amen. You know, we get to do many things in life, but a lot of times we get to go to church, and man, there's nothing like it. You know, it's just great to be in the presence of God, and great to be in the presence of people who love God. Amen. And you can tell the difference sometimes when we're in places like we're talking about. So they love God, or they're there just for the motions and things like that, but... Man, we serve a big God, and we pray that, uh, man, He continues to move. He continues yeah. to move today. So, I want to thank everybody for being here. My main text is going to be in Romans chapter 12, but I want to, but we're going to look at Matthew chapter 2 just for a second here. <coughs> the title of the message is going to be Testing Myself with the Gift. <coughs> Tell you what, this is, the, this is the season where a lot of people, man, you got the angel trees, you got everything everywhere. And, and people have this, their heart gets big, you know? A lot of them, sometimes they turn from the Grinch, and they're, what in the, what, Grinch goes two sizes too big, it grows or whatever, about 30 minutes, four sizes, or something like that. It gets bigger, I recorded it, but yeah. it gets bigger. Yeah. It's hard growth. And during this time, things like that happen. But I believe in our, in our walk with God, I believe that we can have this season every single day of our life. Yes. Yes. That's what God is expecting of us. Yes. And we see here, if you go to Matthew chapter 2, we see that the angel of the Lord went to the wise men and said, Look, this is what you need to do. It's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. That's right. And what did they do? They left what they were doing to go to worship the Savior. <laughs> to go worship the one that was born. And they took gifts. That's something. They took gifts to him and laid there. Do you think Jesus knew what they were? He's laying in the manger. He's just laying there. But they, they brought the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They brought gifts. Now what's so great about this story is that there's things in our life that we, that we have been given. There's things through the church that God has supplied for us. They're gifts. And what are we doing with them? Amen. That includes everybody. I don't care how high up you are in the church. Right. That is every single person in the church today. Mm -hmm. If you're in the church today, people in the church today, guess what? These are things that we have that we don't use. That's right. Glory to God. This is going to be hard to preach. I've had this for months. And months. Glory. Romans chapter 12. And we're going to read in verse 3. It says, For I, for I say, Though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God hath dealt with dealt to every man a measure of faith. We have been given a measure of faith. Yes. Huh. Do we use it? Absolutely not sometimes. I don't care who we are. We fail. We do not use it. We have failed God in so many ways. We see that these wise men go and they give him the gifts, right? But again, like Shadab was saying, a lot of times we do not recognize or understand the pain and the punishment that he went through on our behalf. I try. If we think about those things, man, it's just like, ooh, he's it all queasy like she's talking about. It does happen. Movie Passion of Christ. I hate to see it. It's just terrible. But it was real. Amen. That's right. And it's probably worse than what, what the, what the oh, thing yeah. showed. Yeah. A whole lot worse. Yeah. And I just, you, you can't understand it, but it's there. But these men went at the beginning of his life, but they brought him a gift. At the end of his life, he gave us Amen. ultimate gift. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yeah. It gave us life. Glory. And the ones who do not have it, oh, you don't know what you miss. Amen. There's people today I got to go minister to in the laundromat, man. It's amazing, man. The laundromat ministry is growing. I got more. I got people coming every single week. Starting next week, I got a family coming that need help. And they want to know what time. I said, what time do you need me to be here? And we'll take care of it. There are hurting people. Folks, we're sitting in the church and people are hurting out there. That's right. We're doing absolutely nothing because we're waiting for them to come to the church. Yes. The gift is out there. That's right. We got to go give it to somebody. We got to go and share it with somebody. What God has done for us, it, it don't does not have to be here. But what do we do? We don't bring our gifts to people. We don't give our gifts to God. We don't give our gifts to anybody. We hoard them to we, we hoard them in to where we don't end up give, doing anything. That's the whole church. Leadership all the way down to the little peon. The peon are the little kids. <laughs> Talk about the kids, not just the peon. I call you peons. <laughs> the kids. All the way down. I mean, you see these kids and stuff and growing up. When I was growing up, I see all these, these kids that would get up and they would sing to God in the church, man. Just little things. Not afraid. And I was one of those kids I was, if I had to do something in front of the church, I was in the back behind somebody. I still don't want to be seen. I hate being seen in the church. But glory to God, God said, look, get over it. I need right. you to go do something for me. This is what I need you to do. So what I have to do is, Lord, I don't know if this is a good gift or not, but I just need to give you this. And that means I'll go where you need me to go. That's right. That's a gift. Go do what you got to do. But we can't think more highly of ourselves than we ought. That's right. That's in the church. No. Well, I can't change. Well, let me tell you something. If something is not working, then we got to change. That's right. That's simple. I don't care how long you've been doing things. It's got to change. Why? Because Daddy says it might be time to change. That's right. Glory. And if we are afraid of change, then get away. It will not work because God will not be in it. Glory. I've had a fight for weeks with this thing. You know how I got this? Somebody come to me for help. Somebody come to me for help about God. We've been tested all my life. There's been tests laid out. And you know what? I have passed some and I have miserably felt some. When you make a seven on a test in school and the teachers come to you, how can you make a seven ring? Your name counts for five. <laughs> Lord, what are you doing? You got two points. Five was your name. Glory, boy. And this man was a good man. He was a godly man. And you know what? He's a pastor of a church. But that man stuck by me, even through my sevens. Might have had to do some extra credit, but I made it. Glory. Why? This man had a gift. And the gift was, you know what? He didn't know what student was going to be the one ministering for God. But he knew he had to touch these kids' lives. And I was one of those that he touched. Even with the seven, God can make something out of it. Can he not? Yeah, he can. Glory. Amen. I cannot spell a lick, but <laughs> glory. That's okay. And I can't talk proper much either sometimes. I ain't got no. I do that quite a bit. People look at me like, ain't got no. <laughs> I say, hey, you can dress them up, but you can't take the redneck out, I guess. You know? yeah. <laughs> anyway. I try, though. I try. I'm getting better. No, it's slow. It's a process. But there's things that we're doing in the church. Not even, I'm not even close to the message. <laughs> Glory. There's things that we're doing in the church that isn't God or isn't not God. If it's God, should we do it? You bet. Amen. If it's not God, no. Right? Yeah. So what we have to do is every single day is we've got to give God ourselves, right? In, in, in many ways. And I'm switching going to, to a different thing here. For just a minute. One of the things that this person came and they asked the questions and I tried to help them and I did. Late that night, 
What happened was, God started speaking to me. Ray, you've been tested. And then I started testing myself. Where am I at with God? Hmm. Where am I at? Do we test ourselves? Do we look at ourselves more than we look at other people? I cannot go to a place and not look at other people without looking at myself first. Amen. That does not work for me. One of the things that I did is I said, Lord God, what is it that I need help with? What are things that we're struggling with in life that can lead me, get this, lead me to a closer relationship with Amen. you? Amen. Right? With Him. That's what the, the ultimate gift that we have is to give back to Him is ourself. See, the world wants our best. Right? That's what the world wants. When you have a job, they want you to do your best every single day that you're there. Do the best that you can. That's what we have. But God says one thing. I want all of you. Ha right. <laughs> ha! He does not want just our best, does He not? He said, Ray... You're not the best speaker in the world, but you're dumb enough to go. <laughs> I'll send you to a place you will go. You may feel unworthy. You may be embarrassed to do these things. But I know you're going to go, so this is where I'm going to send you. And guess what it does? It's called humble. Right? It humbles you when you see the hurting people that you're able to help. You know what? I wanted huh, getting this ready. And I'm, like I said, I've had this for a while. Getting this ready. I'm checking myself. And I, I wanted the wine the other day. I'll be honest. I wanted the wine. I, I, you know, I'm not saying I feel good every day. But I was, I, was, I was whining at home. Nobody was there. So nobody knows that for now. And I come up the steps from doing something downstairs. And it was hard to get back up the steps. And I was whining and all that. I was like, oh, my God. Then I got to thinking, Lord, why am I, why am I being so whiny? other people hurting worse than right. me. This is the time that we come together as families. People's going to be traveling. There's mercy. You know, we need travel mercy. We need all these things to come together as families. Why? There's homes that are broken. Talked to a man yesterday. I'm struggling with this. Broken family. So what do I do? You sit there, you listen, you comfort you don't know where you're going to be. But these things come up. A man this morning, come to me. Come to me. I'm just walking around being normal. <laughs> as normal as I can be when I walk into a lawyer, man. All right? First goes to me, he said, I need you to pray for me. I got this issue. I need help. I said, okay. This is what we'll do. We will do. But that's what we did. We, we pray. Now, one of these gifts that we have right here to get us closer to God. God said, Ray, why? I, I, you need to test yourself in these things. This We got a new year coming up. We need to say, God, let me be just like these the, the three men that brought the gifts to you when you was a baby. Right? We need to be like these men. This is the new year coming up. Say, God, I need to give you these gifts right now. Now, these are things that we've got to do, but we're going to say, God, I want to do this to get me closer to you. You understand that? Because let me tell you something. Sometimes when we go to these places, some of the things might not be as bad. Ha <laughs> ha, right? You know, the church is being attacked. The church is being attacked. Not just this church. Every church, right? The church is being attacked today. Let me tell you something. When we get in to the prayer that God, mm, the prayer to God that leads to, to, we don't understand why we keep praying, but we can't stop. The Bible says pray without ceasing. The first thing we need to give to God this year to get us closer to Him is our prayer time. Time is one of the biggest things that we can ever give God. Prayer is one of these things. Prayer is something that we have to go day in and day out. What would happen when we do that? Our faith will grow. That measure will become, 
If your faith is only a foot long, prayer can make it a foot and a half. Your faith will grow. If our faith is not growing, I believe sometimes we are not growing. We have got to stand in faith. We have got to preach faith. I do not try to walk around whiny. I get whiny. But I have to stop. Try Why? There's hurting people, and it's not about me. Ha ha! Glory. Try. Get over yourself. Amen. It's what we got to do. From the top to the beyond. <laughs> the little kids. All right? They're so cool. They're loud, but they're cool. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 3 and 4 says, If a man think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work. Aha. This is what God said to Ray. Prove yourself, big boy. Prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. And not in another. I don't have to rejoice. I can rejoice in my own self, right? I can do these things. I can do this prayer thing. We go to God and say, God, I will give you this this year. This is one of my gifts back to you. I'm going to pray every single day. The biggest example God showed me this week, I was talking to some guys. And then one of the things that came to me was, God showed me was this what? Ray, you know, I thought I had the faith that I was supposed to have, but I'm not. I did not have the faith. God showed me blind faith, right? We think we have it, but we don't sometimes. We do not have that blind faith. How many of us come in and we sit down in a pew or a chair, right? We do not think about that chair falling. We do not think about our chair falling. God showed me something. He said, Ray, there's people coming into church today and we're sitting down, right? Our faith it's beyond measure because we do not think about anything happening when we sit down. Okay? We do not think about that. We just sit. We turn on light switches. We turn off light switches. We go out and do whatever, whatever we do during the day. You understand that? We do these things. We don't think about it. We just do it. There's not a thought in our mind. That's the way God's saying to, read, to me to have with my faith. He's saying, Ray, you do not have time to think about the faith. You've got to already have it from the time you moment you get out of bed during the day. You've got to go. Amen. That means healing's going to come. People's lives are going to be changed. Right. Marriage is back together. Right. Families together. And there won't be no more of this other stuff. There won't be no more me time. Because why? Our faith is so blind when we get up, we automatically just go and do what God's called us to do, right. and which we don't know what it's going to be that day. We just get up and we just go. Why? It's blind faith saying, God, I know absolutely what you're going to do. And that is that you're going to send me wherever I need to go and to hook. You're going to send people whoever it will be. That's faith. That's right. That is faith. That is just going and doing exactly what we're supposed to do every single day. How do we get there? Through prayer. Number one, is, is it, that's through prayer. The next thing is, guess what? We can learn about God another way too. It's called Bible reading. Oh, man. That's one of the things that we lack as church. How many likes in that? Anybody? Yeah, I'll be honest. Yes, I do. I lack it. Why? You can always improve. That's right. That's right. You can always improve. Look at Shaq. Your boy can't shoot free throws. Do you need, <laughs> do you want him to teach you how to shoot free throws? Absolutely not. The boy can't shoot free throws. Right. He's too big, right? He can still make them if he work. Well, Glory to God, I said that. <laughs> He's bigger than me. He could hurt me if he hears me. All right? So we don't want to do that. Or do you want to go to learn finance from somebody who can't? You understand that? Right. To go learn, we got to learn from who, from who has the answer. Right. The, every answer to our problems, every answer to our situations is this. We're saying, God, this coming year, I'm going to give you back a gift. And that is, I'm going to read your word. And it's going to change my life. Why? Because we've already got the faith. Sure. we got the faith because we're learning to pray. Then we're going to get more faith when we get the Bible, right? When we get the Bible in there, then we're going to go from a foot and a half, from foot to foot and a half to two feet. Aha! Uh -huh. Glory. Guess what? We're getting a little bit stronger, aren't we? 
Why? Then when the devil comes against us, we're going to be able to fight back. That's right. But guys, we're failing to do these things. Why? Because sometimes we do not think about ourselves. We just think, I'm okay. And guess what? We're not. We always have to improve. That's right. I believe we always have to improve. If we can't improve, but man, there's something wrong. I told, the, I told the guys in the jail this week, I told the guys in the jail, I said, look, if I'm the smartest one in this room, we're in trouble. That's all I can say. <laughs> wow. Because I've learned to humble myself, right? And try to go into a room where somebody's smarter than me. And why is that? So I can learn something. If we want to go in and be the leader, we want to go in and be the smartest one in the room, wrong attitude. We cannot improve. <laughs> Yesterday, I was, at, uh, I was working at the paintball field. Two guys come up who plays paintball for the University of Tennessee. They got, they got, they actually got paintball for, in these colleges. And these dudes were shooting so fast and so hard. It's awful. <laughs> I was like, glory. I, mean, I, was, I was reffing, right? I don't know. I'm not playing much. I'm just reffing, hanging out the field, getting to know people. Guess what? Sharing God. You know who I am. You know, any place we can go. They say no, they were, they were playing one on one, and they're talking, I mean, these things are going choo, choo, choo. And I was running up the other side. I was running this way. They were going this way. So I get away from them. One of the refs got nailed. I mean, he got hit right here. He got a big old knot. I mean, it's just a big knot that's coming. Like, they're shooting so fast. I was like, I can't get out of the way. I told God, I said, I'm done. I just run up the other end. I was like, don't let me get hit. So I was, I was, I'm supposed to watch them. I should have say, huh, you're crazy. But guess what? I learned how to play. Why? They're better. They're better at it. They're just better. So what do you do? You learn from what you see. You go to people that's better than you. Okay? If, if you know karate, then you, then you don't, you know, if, and you know everything about it, that's kind of hard, isn't it? But there's always ways to improve. How do you improve that? You keep doing it over and over. Repetition is one of the biggest things that we can do. Bible reading, we need to give God that. All right? Now, those two things will lead us to something else. And that is this. Prayer and reading of the Word can lead us to being led by God in our life. Each day we get up, we be led by God. Psalms 25, 4 says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Show me thy right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. That's a New Living Translation. Show me the right path. <laughs> so what's he asking? What road am I supposed to be on, really? You show me the road, and I'll go down it. Because <laughs> if we, let me tell you something. How many of us, if we see a bumpy road or the smooth road, which one would we prefer? The smooth. Are we crazy? Yeah. That's what we want. The easy way, right? That's the best way. To me, if there's a bumpy side of the road, go to the other side, if you can. How many of you, you travel, you almost go, boo, 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 boo. you hit the little thing. It just drives you nuts, man. It's like a rhythm. You know, you want to start rapping when you go driving all those things. I'm not good at it, but you want to. Anyway, but he's saying, show me the road, right? Lord, point out the road for me to follow, okay? He may send us up that bumpy road. So, guess what? When we get there and we're led by God, when we wake up in the morning, what do we do? We go with blind faith. God, you know, it's easy to stand up and preach God, I'm going through things. I got faith, but it's hard when somebody walks through it and they complain. <laughs> people just complain, right? To be honest, people complain. So what do we do? We got to do what we have to do. That's the road that we're on. You got to get over. It. Basically, right? We have to. Man, I was in service one time. A man told me, <laughs> "You're 15 minutes over." I was like, glory to God. Bless God. Hey, he got something on the server. I was 15 minutes late. Ha <laughs> ha! It wasn't for him. <laughs> the next week, I got done. I think it was five or ten minutes over, right? Went to the same man. I shook my hand. I said, hey, look at your clock. I said, I was, I was five minutes better than it was last week. Ha <laughs> ha! Glory. You know? But I got something on the service. I got to get him back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? 
Each service is enough for everybody, right? But what do we do? I took it. Guess what? God says, right here, get over. Get over. We can't do these things. Why? Sometimes we have to go down a road that's starting to kind of bump you. <laughs> because God says, I need you to go down this road to make you stronger. Right? Why? Well, I'm strong enough. <laughs> no, there's things that God still wants to teach us. Why? Because we don't want to, we don't want to receive it first. Why? Because we think we, we already have it. You understand that? You understand that? That's the way, that's the way we do. I, I've been there. I don't want to hear anything. But when we're led by God, God's saying, Ray, I need you to go down this road. This is the road I need you to go on. And I'm saying, there going, God, I don't like this road. I hate this road. It's okay. I'm with you. Where's your faith? I don't have that blind faith. I have to learn it. Months ago, I started getting this. Months ago. I've had it just jotted down the brief portion right at the beginning. Boom. And I don't have time to preach it all. But we got to get the prayer. We got to get the Bible reading in. Why? Then we can be more led by God in life. But we have to give our gifts to God. And then we have to say, Lord, you lead me. See, David here, he said, expressed a desire for guidance. Did he not? How do we receive God's guidance? The first step is to want to be guided. The first step. Do we really want to be led by God? Or do we want to do it ourselves? That's a test. Check yourself. Look in the mirror and ask yourself the question. Do I really want to be led by God? Because he's going to send you down the most uncomfortable road sometimes that drives me crazy. Ray, I need you to go here. And I go, no. And then he goes, okay, that's all right. Because you'll go tomorrow. <laughs> because you're going to be so uncomfortable today that you'll go. There have been times I have felt I have not wanted to go to the jail. Because I just didn't feel it. But guess what? Those men can't get out, can they? Try. If I don't go, they're not going to hear the word. And guess what? Sometimes that's their only exit out of the cell block. And guess what? I'm their only visitor for the week, too. Hmm. So do you think I need to go? You bet. It's awesome. Go ahead. It is so awesome. Those doors shut, I know I'm home. <laughs> I had somebody tell me one time, well, you fit right in there. I said, I'd blow it. In what way? <laughs> what way do I fit in that program? <laughs> I don't know. I hope it's a good way. All right. We can be led by God if we want to. That's one of the things we need to do this next year. Give God this gift of saying, God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible. So one, I'll know when I'm led by you down a certain road. And I'm going to know when it's me. But the point is, we've got to be led by God in our lives, not by us. That's right. When we do, we fall. Things crumble. And God can allow it to fall. God can allow it to crumble. Until he gets your attention and you go tomorrow. That's the way he does with me. I don't know about you, but that's the way he does with me. Then the next thing, we say, God, man, I'm going to do, i got to do your work. The Bible reading and <laughs> when we're led by God, you know, we have the Bible reading, we have the prayer, we have all these things, and we're led by God. We get up, we have that blind faith, we're absolutely, we're just going because we know that God has our life in His hand. See, He has His life, our life in His hand, and He understands everything we're going through, but yet we, 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 we still don't have enough faith. But when we have that, and we're led by God, and we start to faith starts to grow, guess what happens? When we're led by God, you know, we go from, from one feet to two, to one and a half to two to three. Then, what happened? God said, i got something for you to do. I need some work. I need some work. There's some, you know, and we're just walking. We're, we're, we're there. We're, 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 we're sitting. And then somebody comes up like today. I need prayer for this reason. And they just start spilling to you. And you sit there and you live these gifts right now. Now, these are things that we've got to do, but we're going to say, God, I want to do this to get me closer to you. You understand that? 
Because let me tell you something. Sometimes when we go to these places, some of the things might not be as bad. Ha <laughs> ha, right? You know, the church is being attacked. The church is being attacked. Not just this church, every church, right? The church is being attacked today. Let me tell you something. When we get in to the prayer that God, mm, the prayer to God that leads to, to, we don't understand why we keep praying, but we can't stop. The Bible says pray without ceasing. The first thing we need to give to God this year to get us closer to Him is our prayer time. Time is one of the biggest things that we can ever give God. Prayer is one of these things. Prayer is something that we have to go day in and day out. Why would happen when we do that? Our faith will grow. That measure will become... <clears throat> if your faith is only a foot long, prayer can make it a foot and a half. Your faith will grow. If our faith is not growing, I believe sometimes we are not growing. We have got to stand in faith. We have got to preach faith. I do not try to walk around whining. I get whining. But I have to stop. Try. Why? There's hurting people, and it's not about me. Ha ha! Glory. Try. Get over yourself. Amen. That's what we got to do. From the top to the beyond. Ha ha! The little kids. All right? They're so cool. They're loud, but they're cool. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 3 and 4 says, If a man think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work. Aha! This is what God said to Ray. Prove yourself, big boy. Prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. And not in another. I don't have to rejoice. I can rejoice in my own self, Right? I can do these things. I can do this prayer thing. We go to God and say, God, I will give you this this year. This is one of my gifts back to you. I'm going to pray every single day. The biggest example God showed me this week, I was talking to some guys. And then one of the things that came to me was, God showed me was this one. Ray, you know, I thought I had the faith that I was supposed to have, but I'm not. I did not have the faith. God showed me, blind right? We think we have it, but we don't sometimes. We do not have that blind faith. How many of us come in and we sit down in a pew or a chair, right? We do not think about that chair falling. We do not think about our chair falling. God showed me something. He said, Ray, there's people coming into church today and we're sitting down, right? Our faith is beyond measure because we do not think about anything happening when we sit down, okay? We do not think about that. We just sit. We turn on light switches. We turn off light switches. We go out and do whatever, whatever we do during the day. You understand that? We do these things. We don't think about it. We just do it. There's not a thought in your mind. That's the way God's saying to, read, to me to have with my faith. He's saying, Ray, you do not have time to think about the faith. you got to already have it from the time you moment you get out of bed during the day. you got to go. Amen. That means healing's going to come. People's lives are going to be changed. Right. Marriage is back together. Right. Families together. And there won't be no more of this other stuff. There won't be no more me time. Because why? Our faith is so blind when we get up, we automatically just go and do what God's called us to do, right. in which we don't know what it's going to be that day. We just get up and we just go. Why? It's blind faith saying, God, I know absolutely what you're going to do. And that is that you're going to send me wherever I need to go and to hook. You're going to send people whoever it will be. That's faith. Right. That is faith. That is just going and doing exactly what we're supposed to do every single day. How do we get there? Through prayer. Number one, is, 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 that's through prayer. The next thing is, guess what? We can learn about God another way too. It's called Bible reading. Oh, man. That's one of the things that we lack as church. How many likes in that? Anybody? Yeah, I'll be honest. Yes, I do. I lack it. Why? You can always improve. That's right. That's right. You can always improve. Look at Shaq. The boy can't shoot free throws. Do you need... 
Do you want him to teach you how to shoot free throws? Absolutely not. The boy can't shoot free throws. Right. He's too big. Right? He can still make them if he worked. Well, glory to God, better not say that. <laughs> He's bigger than me. He can hurt me if he hears me. All right? So we don't want to do that. Or do you want to go to learn finance from somebody who can't? You understand that? Right. To go learn, we got to learn from who, from who has the answer. The, every answer to our problems, every answer to our situations is this. We're saying, God, this coming year, I'm going to give you back a gift. And that is, I'm going to read your word. And it's going to change my life. Why? Because we've already got the faith. Sure. we got the faith because we're learning to pray. Then we're going to get more faith when we get the Bible, right? When we get the Bible in there, then we're going to go from a foot and a half, from foot to foot and a half to two feet. Aha! Uh -huh. No, guess what? We're getting a little bit stronger, aren't we? Why? Then when the devil comes against us, we're going to be able to fight back. That's right. But guys, we're failing to do these things. Why? Because sometimes we do not think about ourselves. We just think, I'm okay. And guess what? We're not. We always have to improve. That's right. I believe we always have to improve. If we can't improve, but man, there's something wrong. I told, the, I told the guys in the jail this week, I told the guys in the jail, I said, look, if I'm the smartest one in this room, we're in trouble. That's all I can say. <laughs> wow. Because I've learned to humble myself, right? And try to go into a room where somebody's smarter than me. And why is that? So I can learn something. If we want to go in and be the leader, we want to go in and be the smartest one in the room, wrong attitude. We cannot improve. <laughs> Yesterday, I was, at, uh, I was working at the paintball field. Two guys come up and plays paintball for the University of Tennessee. They got, they got, they actually got paintball for, in these colleges. And these dudes were shooting so fast and so hard. It's awful. <laughs> I was like, glory. I mean, I was, I was reffing, right? I don't know. I'm not playing much. I'm just reffing, hanging out the field, getting to know people. Guess what? Sharing God. People know who I am. You know, any place we can go. They say no, they were, they were playing one on one, and they're talking, I mean, these things are going choo, choo, choo. And I was running up the other side. I was running this way, they were going this way. So I get away from them. One of the refs got nailed. I mean, he got hit right here. He got a big old knot. I mean, it's just a big knot that's coming. Like, they're shooting so fast. I was like, I can't get out of the way. I told God, I said, I'm done. I just run up the other end. I was like, don't let me get hit. So I was, I was, I was supposed to watch them. I should have said, huh, you're crazy. But guess what? I learned how to play. Why? They're better. They're better at it. They're just better. So what do you do? You learn from what you see. You go to people that's better than you. Okay? If, if you know karate, then you, then you don't, you know, if, and you know everything about it, that's kind of hard, isn't it? But there's always ways to improve. How do you improve that? You keep doing it over and over. Repetition is one of the biggest things that we can do. Bible reading, we need to give God that. All right? Now, those two things will lead us to something else. And that is this. Prayer and reading of the Word can lead us to being led by God in our life. Each day we get up, we be led by God. Psalms 25, 4 says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Show me thy right path, O Lord. Point out the road... For me to follow. That's a New Living Translation. Show me the right path. <laughs> so what's he asking? What road am I supposed to be on, really? Right. You show me the road, and I'll go down. Ha! <laughs> because if we, let me tell you something. How many of us, if we see a bumpy road or the smooth road, which one would we prefer? <laughs> the smooth. Are we crazy? Yeah. yeah. That's what we want. The easy way, right? That's the best way. To me, if there's a bumpy side of the road, go to the other side, if you can. How many of you, you travel, you almost go, boom, 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 boom. you hit the little thing. It's just driving you nuts, man. It's like a rhythm. <laughs> you know, you want to start rapping when you go drive, driving those things. I'm not good at it, but you want to. Anyway, but he's saying, show me the road. Right? Lord, point out the road for me to follow. Okay. He may send us up that bumpy road. So, Guess what? When we get there and we're led by God, when we wake up in the morning, what do we do? We go with blind faith. God, you know, 
It's easy to stand up and preach, God, I'm going through things, i got faith, but it's hard when somebody walks through it and they complain. <laughs> people just complain, right? To be honest, people complain. So what do we do? We've got to do what we have to do. That's the road that we're on. You've got to get over it, basically, right? We have to. Man, I was in service one time. A man told me, you're 15 minutes old. I was like, glory to God. Bless God. Hey, he got something out of the service. I was 15 minutes late. Ha <laughs> ha! It wasn't for him. <laughs> the next week, I got done. I think it was five, ten minutes over, right? Went to the same man. I shook my hand. I said, hey, look at your clock. I said, I was, I was five minutes better than it was last week. Ha <laughs> ha! Glory. You know? But I got something out of the service. I got to get him back. Yeah. <laughs> what? Each service is not for everybody, right? But what do we do? I took it. Guess what? God says, right, you get over. Get over. We can't do these things. Why? Sometimes we have to go down a road that's starting to kind of bumpy. <laughs> because God says, I need you to go down this road to make you stronger. Right? Why? Well, I'm strong enough. <laughs> no, there's things that God still wants to teach us. Why? Wow, because we don't, want to, we don't want to receive it first. Why? Wow, because we think we, we already have it. You understand that? You understand that? That's the way, that's the way we do. I, I've been there. I don't want to hear anything. But when we're led by God, God's saying, Ray, I need you to go down this road. This is the road I need you to go on. And I'm saying, well, God, I don't like this road. I hate this road. It's okay. I'm with you. Where's your faith? I don't have that blind faith. I have to learn it. Months ago, I started getting this. Months ago. I've had it just jotted down the brief portion right at the beginning. Boom. And I don't have time to preach it all. But we got to get the prayer. We got to get the Bible reading in. Why? Then we can be more led by God in life. But we have to give our gifts to God. And then we have to say, Lord, you lead me. <laughs> See, David here, he said, expressed a desire for guidance. Did he not? How do we receive God's guidance? The first step is to want to be guided. The first step. Do we really want to be led by God? Or do we want to do it ourselves? That's a test. Check yourself. Look in the mirror and ask yourself the question. Do I really want to be led by God? Because He's going to send you down the most uncomfortable road sometimes that drives me crazy. Right? I need you to go here. And I go, no. And then he goes, okay, that's all right, because you'll go tomorrow. <laughs> because you'll be so uncomfortable today that you'll go. There have been times I have felt I have not wanted to go to the gym because I just didn't feel good. But guess what? Those men can't get out, can they? That's right. If I don't go, they're not going to hear the word. And guess what? Sometimes that's their only exit out of the cell block. And guess what? I'm their only visitor for the week, too. So do you think I need to go? You bet, man. It's awesome. No way. It is so awesome. Those doors shut, I know I'm home. <laughs> I had somebody tell me one time, well, you fit right in there. I said, I no way. In what way? <laughs> what way do I fit in that program? <laughs> I don't know. I hope it's a good way. All right. We can be led by God if we want to. That's one of the things we need to do this next year. Give God this gift of saying, God, I'm going to pray, I'm going to read my Bible, so one, I'll know when I'm led by you down a certain road. And I'm going to know when it's me. But the point is, we've got to be led by God in our lives, not by us. That's right. When we do, we fall. Things crumble. And God can allow it to fall. God can allow it to crumble. Until He gets your attention and you go tomorrow. That's the way he does with me. I don't know about you, but that's the way he does with me. Then the next thing, we say, God, man, I'm going to do, i got to do your work. The Bible reading, and <laughs> when we're led by God, we, you know, we have the Bible reading, we have the prayer, we have all these things, and we're led by God, we get up, we have that blind faith, we're absolutely, we're just going because we know that God has our life in his hand. 
See, he has his life, our life in his hand, and he understands everything we're going through, but yet we, 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 we still don't have enough faith. But when we have that and we're led by God, and we start to faith starts to grow, guess what happens? When we're led by God, you know, we go from, from one feet to two, to one and a half to two to three. Then, what happens? God's saying, I got something for you to do. I need some work. I need some work. There's, I'm, you know, and we're just walking. We're, we're, we're there. We're, 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 we're sitting. And then somebody comes up like today. I need prayer for this reason. And they just start spilling to you. And you sit there and you listen to what they have. That's God's work. Taking up offering in the church is God's work. Cleaning the church is God's work. Just doing the little things in church is God's work. Anything that we can do for God is God's work. You see little kids going up, taking up offering this, that, and the other. And I used to take, we used to bring kids to church when I have youth pastor and stuff. We'd go pick them up. <laughs> Had a family of three kids, man. They were wild, man. They were so wild. And one of the kids, it was so hard. We had a Sunday morning service, and we took them to Sunday school and all that stuff. And I got there, and they said, no, the offering was missing. <laughs> oh, glory. It was so bad. One of the kids I brought sort of snatched some of the offering. Almost all of it, about a dollar. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, but it's not. You know, Lord, forgive me for laughing, but it's not supposed to forgive me. Uh, at the time, I was like, oh, my gosh, how devastating. What am I going to do? They said, oh, oh, God, I brought them to church. You know, I'm sitting there. But you know what? That's just a road that God said, look, you brought them, they heard your word. And they say no. They were able to give. You know, they were like, oh, man, there's the offering plate. Oh, I got some money for it. And they're pulling out all this money. <laughs> I think it was already in there, you know. So we had to try to talk to them, this, that, and the other, pull them to the side. And it, was, it was a hard time. You know what I mean? But what did we learn from it? Number one, don't leave the offering plate out where people can snatch it. <laughs> That's number one. But anyway, uh, it has to deter me from taking people to church, though. It has to deter me from going to the people that, that, that don't have the best habits in life. You understand what I'm saying? God will send us to these people and, and put us in their lives. Why? For us to show them a different way of life. Guess what? We may not think we're doing anything, right? But yet, they will remember it. They will remember how you treated them, how you spoke to them, and the things and how you handled situations. If I would have flew off the handle, they would remember that. They will, but when they remember the way you handled it, that you did not dog them, you did not break them down, you did not beat them down, and all that, you know what I'm saying? When you don't do those things, they'll remember that too. I remember this. Do you remember? And, and kids will come up and, and they'll have all these things sometimes when they, you know, they're all, a lot of them adults now. Some of my first ones. And they still say, oh, you remember something since? Like, Man, I don't remember last week. You know, it's hard for me to remember some of this stuff. But there's crazy things that, you, that, that we've done. Why? Because God's put us in that life down that road. He put us in that road and said, this is where I need you to go today. Right? And it might not be the road we want to go. But God may open up a door and say, look, this is where you got to go. And what do you do? You have to. You don't have to go. It's best to go. It makes it easier on you. But when we, when we do those things, when we're led by God... <clears throat> And then we'll have the ability to end up doing God's work more than anything when we're led by God. We can do God's work in, in many ways. There's many ways of doing it, right? There's preachers, there's teachers, there's singers. There's people who, who's able to give more. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? That's able to give to ministry and all those things. God has all these people in the church. But it's up to us to make sure that, they're, that people are guided the right direction. And that, 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 that they're not told something that, 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 that's just crazy. Now, it says in Mark 16, 15, it says, And he said unto them, as Jesus speaking, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we're supposed to do. Now, how we get there or how, how our, our presence gets there, it, it, it doesn't matter sometimes. Because if we're praying for, for, for a, a, a certain person, right? We're saying, God, you, you take care of that person in any way that, that you, know, you can to change them, to get them to you, or whatever. If you're praying, you're a part of that. 
when they come to God because you are in their life in a way that they don't even know. See, what's going to be great is when you get to heaven those people you don't know God is, that made it there because of you. Because of something that you've done. That changed your life, that turned them to God. Right? And you don't realize it, but it happened. Later. And you didn't see it. But yet they get there and say, thank you so much because I'm here because of you. That's going to be one of the greatest things that we can hear when we get to heaven, man. Man, it says in 2 Timothy 4, 5, it says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Let me tell you something. we got to let the world know that we are Christians. Right. Not a believer, a Christian. A Christian is somebody that's going to walk for God and go the way that he says and down to his road. There's many believers out there, and they believe what they believe, but they go down their road. But guess what? we got to walk like a God-fearing man right. and, and woman and go through this life and do the right thing. Are we going to mess up? You bet. But the thing is, do it God's work his way and not our way. God's work is very important. Now, the next thing we got to do, and I want to close right here with this. It says, we got to live my life for God only. For God only. I cannot live it for my family. I got to live my life for God and what He needs me to do. Now, if my family wants to go along and do something, that is great and that's dandy, is it not? But if they don't, I still got to do what I have to do. That is to go places that makes people uncomfortable. He sent me to people that other people have forgotten about. We forget about the men and women in the jails. We forget about a laundromat when we drive by. We forget about these places. 